My name is Ron Frank. I'm the assistant negotiator for Comox, which is an honor and a pleasure that I have been given by the nation. Comox First Nation has been involved for a long time in developing a constitution. A constitution is the highest law of a nation, in this case, Comox Nation. It's subject only to the treaty and the Constitution of Canada. And it enshrines the governance structure, the roles and responsibilities, and the obligations of the individuals of the nation as well as the government of the nation. For Comox First Nation, having a constitution really means that there's a structure in place and the highest law of the land called the Constitution enshrines the, separate, the various levels of government, separates the powers of government, identifies the individual rights and responsibilities, and really is the structure that holds the self-government in place. Our Comox First Nation Constitution will mean fairness for our people and for our governance so that people will have uh, rules, everyone will understand the rules. Um, it's drafted in a way that's easy to read for our people and for us to understand um, how our governance structure will work um, so that we can be accountable, um, the, the governance can be accountable and also our people can be accountable. And it uh, projects our values as Comox First Nation people. It, it, it talks about our culture and it talks about how our people will be governed by what now is our chief and council. So, the way that the Comox First Nation administration and council acts has changed over the years so that there is a emerging a sense of separation of business from politics and, and those types of concentrations of power which affect the people so much. So the current government structure for the Comox First Nation is uh, there is a chief and three councillors at the top and they are voted in by the membership so they work for the membership and they're the voice for the membership and they have one employee which is myself, the band administrator and then I have employees under me and we have three committees which is the Finance Audit Committee, the Lands Committee and the Housing Committee and then from there we have the business trustees and the bear trustees which are the conduit that go to economic development and the board of directors there. And then we also have a treaty table that the chief and council sit at that is separate from my administration duties and they do the work at those tables. Uh, under modern treaty, the Comox government structure, as per the constitution, will have a three-tiered government uh, that will be the legislative, the judicial, and the executive. The executive will be basically the achievement council functions of today. Uh, the legislative will make the laws and the judicial will handle um, appeals and grievances. The three tiers is um, a general structure that most First Nations adapt. However, we do have the freedom to shape our government the way we want to. We can include our hereditary chiefs if we'd like. Uh, we can build a completely different structure if we'd like. Um, the most important thing about that is that we are in control and we have the say of what that is. For our Comox First Nation people, the Constitution will mean a lot as it's going to be, it's a document that is going to last for, for, for all for the rest of um, once they, our treaty is approved it's going to be there forever it's almost like the canadian constitution it's a document that's going to guide us the, um, the people but also our governance how our people value our cultural beliefs our, our language and our people as a whole we came up with a draft constitution after reviewing about four or five constitutions with our first nations that are already working and so we took parts of it to make it ours because that was our mandate, was that we wanted the document to reflect what the Comox people values were. So other nations who have constitutions are not that many in terms of modern day treaty making. It's really only been the last half a dozen years. I think Comox will benefit the most from having a constitution by having a structure within which people will feel safe and able to function from the administrative process right up through the law development and legislative process. 
the biggest benefit for the change in government under treaty would be just the freedom to make our own decisions and have the authority to do things our way, which historically over the last 150 plus years, First Nations didn't have that. I think uh, uh, what makes me proud of the draft constitution so far is the input that all our people have had into it. Um, they, we brought it back several times to our membership from the beginning and even till now. Our people feel proud in the sense that this is theirs because we drafted it. It's not something somebody else said, you, you have to do this. And this is a good reflection of what treaty is. The Comox First Nation Constitution stands out because of the level of engagement that Comox has spent the time and energy to do in advance of reaching ratification. And with the added benefit of a number of other modern day treaty nations having gone through the process and reflecting with Comox on what works and what doesn't work. It's been a huge benefit. So the, the Comox Constitution is exemplary in terms of its place in the timeline of history. My hopes for the Comox First Nation government under treaty is that Comox First Nation will realize their inherent right to self-government and be able to do it in a way that uh, promotes our stewardship of lands and cares for our members. I think one thing I would like to share with my people is to remind them that although this process is long, that there was always a purpose behind it and that um, our elders and ancestors and some very strong people in other nations fought for this opportunity that didn't exist before 1992. Uh, there was never an option to sit down and negotiate with the government uh, for resources and lands and your inherent right to govern, govern yourself. Uh, so we shouldn't forget that, um, that our ancestors never had this opportunity, our elders, and that uh, we should take advantage of this and make it the best we can for our people.